Right. We have the breaking news of the day. We do that all the time on this show. But there are also these big news questions, aren't there, that are always kind of floating around in the ether that we should really know the answers to. And the one today that I'm asking is, are electric cars actually better for the environment? So this, this part of the show is my two chart challenge. And I get experts, proper experts, not just their opinion, but backed up by actual facts. I know, old fashioned. So joining me in the studio is Howard Cox, founder of Fair Fuel UK uh, against electric cars. And uh, defending them is Roger Atkins, founder of Electric Vehicles Outlook. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Right, Howard, I will start with you. Why is the, uh, the traditional uh, combustion engine vehicle better for the planet than electric cars? Well, where do we want to start? I've got a litany of facts which actually... Hit me with them, Howard. Well, well there's lots of things. One of the biggest ones is, of course, uh, EVs, when you manufacture EVs. And we, we should be thinking cradle to grave. Uh, we have to accept that uh, electric vehicles are cleaner on the road. There's no doubt about it. There's nothing coming out of it. They have got a tailpipe. There's no emissions. Uh, and, and can I say, um, this may upset you a bit, but I actually like EVs. I'm, I'm oh, quite no, I'm pro. I'm all right with that. But, but the important thing is we mustn't... We, we've been uh, actually brainwashed into thinking that the diesel and petrol car is a horrible... Th but if you take it from cradle to grave, we're looking at something like 75% more carbon dioxide is produced in a production of an electric vehicle. And I've got this particular statistic. Manufacturing average size creates 20 tonnes of CO2 compared to six tonnes for comparable modern diesel petrol cars. And that's the point. Modern diesel and petrol cars are evolving. Their clean fuel technology is good for the environment. It's getting better and better and better. So I'm simply, I'm simply saying from this point of view is that we've got to be practical. And the only reason why electric vehicles are going to actually be taken up and become more viable is because the government has said they're going to ban diesel and petrol vehicles. Why can't electric vehicles stand on their own four tyres? Right, Roger Atkins, there you go. Come back with your well, robust um, defence of electric vehicles. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm delighted to hear that uh, Howard likes electric vehicles. I think he's uh, he's in some fashion, in some part, uh, a wise man. However, the other parts maybe not so much. Now, um, he talks about embedded carbon. Let's just go back to a first principle. What we're talking about with the electric vehicle uh, journey is a twin imperative. One of them is indeed to reduce CO2. We have a catastrophic amount of uh, CO2 in the atmosphere, 420 parts per million. First time it's been that way for uh, millions of years. And it's now wreaking havoc on how the climate works around the world. That's one thing. But the other imperative has always been clean air. And therefore, if you look, for example, here in London, um, Knox, if you look at all the, the challenges that come out of that tailpipe that I'm, I'm glad that Howard mentioned, um, you've got a big issue. And yes, cars are cleaner all the time. You know, Euro 6 compliance cars are definitely better than Euro 5 and Euro 4 and Euro 3. However, over time, even modern pretty you know, well-manufactured cars will deteriorate. They won't be looked after in the same fashion. It becomes a five-year-old car, a 10-year-old car, a 20-year-old car. And then the emissions coming out of that vehicle are not clean. And I would challenge Howard, if he'd like to sit in a garage with me with a car with a combustion engine tailpipe, even a modern diesel car, Euro 6 compliance vehicle, compared to sitting in a garage with an electric vehicle, um, you know, this is the issue. It's as much about air quality as it is about CO2. So well, I grant you, and listen, I'm not, I'm an independent consultant. Um, so I'm not a flag waving anorak EV person. I actually don't think mass adoption of electric vehicles will be a good idea because owning cars, the inefficiency of parking them for most of the time overnight and during mm. the day just doesn't make sense. That's a big issue, quite frankly. We do need a managed transition. So I'm with you on the point that, you know, necessarily having draconian laws that suddenly say, don't do this, don't do that. I agree with you. Some of this is pretty blunt as an instrument and needs a little bit more of a managed transition. So How do you know what? We don't wholly disagree here, Howard. Um, but I would say, please reference the air quality. And a final point I'd say is, you probably know this name, I hope you do. Um, if you think about Ella Kissy Debra, this is a young girl who died of vehicle pollutant poisoning. She's the first person to, to have that as a legal case. And her mother's been a great uh, champion of all of this that illustrates that emissions from cars uh, will ultimately cause 
Well, in, in sadly, in the case Harry of my daughter, death, but a lot uh, of ill health. Anyway, okay. that's my first opening gambit. Roger, Howard, respond. Because then we've got problems with the lithium batteries as well with electric cars. They're not going to be particularly good for the planet, are they? Well, there's two things here. Lithium is a finite resource for a start. And guess what? In the last year, the price of lithium has doubled. Uh, we're in that situation. Just going back to the CO2, uh, I'm fed up with people using the word catastrophic or crisis levels. CO2 is one reason why we're alive today. It's called photosynthesis. The planet is greening because we've got increased levels of CO2. And, if, uh, and in, regarding London, in terms of the emissions coming out there, the, and get this right, you must get this inside. Everyone listening to this is considering actually the, the problems of London because I'm fighting Sadiq Khan on, on the ultra-low emission zone uh, being moved out to, to Greater London, to the boroughs. The, the asthma rate is half that in London than it is outside of London. And people are living longer in London than outside London. It doesn't stack up the scaremongering things like emissions and all the other bits and pieces. What we should do is allow clean fuel technology to evolve. I want that. I want to breathe clean air. So does every single driver. But one thing is wrong. Stop blaming diesel and petrol, making them the demons, and electric vehicles is somehow an angelic way forward. It's not. The only yeah, reason why Howard, it's going to go Howard, forward Howard, is because Howard, of this... Cat no, no, please. Uh, uh, it, the only way it's going forward is because the government's on your side to actually say, let's get rid of diesel and petrol in 2030. It is wrong, and it's been unconsulted, and it's undemocratic. Roger? Yeah, Howard, Howard, it's not on my side. I'm actually an independent consultant. I don't have a vested interest in one particular thing or the other, quite frankly. I'm just, you know, I, I don't talk, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a complete anorak for EV. I mean, your business, Ultimum, is focused on having uh, an, imp yeah, an improvement as a pursuit, as a business, uh, on emissions. So, of course, you've got a vested interest in maintaining petrol and diesel cars. I understand that. That's a, that's a commercial reality. But the point about batteries, and you mentioned earlier about, you know, where are we going in the future? The, the thing about the electric vehicle and the battery, the battery isn't a liability. It's an asset. We're, we're, we're very close now to having what they call bi-directional charging. Well, listen yeah. to this, Howard. Bi-directional charging will ensure that people can have an energy storage device, the battery in their EV, on the drive that can take cheap electricity at night store it in the battery during, and then use it as and when the person you know, doesn't need that full range because a lot of the range in batteries is far bigger than it needs to. One of the fastest growing companies in the UK is called My Energy. The name gives, gives it away. It's about my energy, not the grid's energy, not Putin's energy, not someone else's energy. It's well, about storing your own energy. And the electric vehicle battery is going to become a huge asset to the individual, to companies and the country. It's not a liability.